Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in this video, we're going to look at topic 2.7, which is market disequilibrium and changes in equilibrium. That would be pages 68 to 75 in your textbook. So this is one of the most important topics, not only in the unit, but I think also in the course, uh, because we are now going to work with manipulate change um, one of the most important models, if not the most important model in the AP microeconomics course, and that is the supply and demand model. So I wanted to start, however, uh, with the model and looking at uh, why equilibrium is where it is. In other words, how do we get to this equilibrium quantity and price? So in the example I gave you, you're going to notice equilibrium is here where supply and demand intersect at a price of $3 and a quantity of 30 units. Now, for example, let's say that a seller decides to raise their price above equilibrium to $4. Notice that if sellers do this, they're going to want to sell more, 10 more units. However, buyers looking at the demand curve are only going to want to buy 20 units, which is 10 less than 30. And so the result here of raising the price above equilibrium is a surplus. There is more that people want to sell than people who want to buy. And so the distance between these two is called a surplus. And in this case, a surplus of 20 units, 40 minus 20. And so what sellers are going to want to do to uh, mitigate this surplus is to lower the price and back to equilibrium. The opposite case is what we would call a shortage, where the seller is, uh, has a price that is below equilibrium. Now, of course, this makes the buyers happy. They're going to want to buy, in this case, 50 units instead of 30, the equilibrium quantity. However, sellers are only going to want to sell 20 here instead of 30. And so you have a shortage here where the quantity demanded is greater than the quantity supplied by 30 units. And so what sellers are going to want to do here is raise the price, right? So the examples I use here, so for a surplus, for example, I use uh, the Nintendo Wii U as an example. When that console first came out, it was way overpriced. And so Nintendo found themselves with a surplus of consoles that nobody wanted to buy. And so they had to lower the price. The example of a shortage, uh, to some degree, I would say are streaming services like Disney Plus, where at first they keep the price really, really low to drive demand for the product. And then they realize, oh, we can raise the price because people like our content want to subscribe to our streaming services. And so inevitably the price rises. And so what I'm really getting at here with equilibrium is that there is this push, whether you set the price above equilibrium or below it, there's going to be this push back to equilibrium. In this case, in the surplus where the seller has made the price too high, the producer lowers it. And when they've made the price too low, like with Disney Plus, for example, uh, Disney raised the price, recognizing that they could and not really lose that many consumers. So now that we understand the inevitability of equilibrium and how market forces tend to push the price towards equilibrium, what happens when equilibrium changes? We're going to look at that here in a second. But first, let's look at this practice question. So go ahead and read the question, and then let's see what you come up with. So the correct answer here is going to be A. So if the price is above equilibrium, we know that's going to result in a surplus. So now let's look at an example of equilibrium changing. So all three of these examples that I'm going to show you, we're going to assume that the good or service that this is a market for is hamburgers. So in this example, there's new grilling technology that cuts production time in half. So notice that our original equilibrium is PE and QE. Because of the better technology, we know from 2.2, uh, that topic, that we're going to move supply to the right. Notice that when we do so, we are moving our equilibrium from this point to this point. And we see that our price falls 
and our quantity rises. And so as you're drawing this, taking notes on it, make sure we've got all of these different labels, the arrow indicating what happens to price and quantity. This is probably the most important part is recognizing the result of a change in equilibrium. What is that doing to the price and quantity in the market? That's very important. So in this example, because of that increase in technology, uh, that is resulting in a supply shift to the right. One pro tip here that if supply shifts by itself, so we call a single shift when only one curve is moving, uh, price and quantity will change in the opposite direction. So that's a good way to check your work. The second example I'm going to give here is the price of chicken sandwiches, a substitute increases. So again, we start with our original price and quantity at equilibrium. And then because chicken sandwiches are more expensive, I'm going to stick with hamburgers. So that's going to increase my demand for hamburgers, resulting in a higher price and a higher quantity. And so when demand shifts, price and quantity will both move in the same direction. Okay, so it's very important that when you're doing these single shifts, where you're moving one curve by itself, that we get an accurate reading on what is happening to price and quantity. Finally, our third example is going to be the price for ground beef, which is an input used to make hamburgers, triples. And so now that hamburgers are more costly to produce, the price rises and the quantity falls due to a supply shift to the left. Okay, so remember that when we say to the left, that means less, to the right, more. And make sure your arrows are indicating that by pointing left or right. So let's go ahead and practice here with this example question. So go ahead, pause the video, read this question, and then determine your answer. So the correct answer here is going to be C. So uh, this is going to mean the supply is going to shift to the left, okay, because the crop, the production is destroyed. So when supply shifts to the left, as we saw in the previous uh, example, price increases and quantity decreases. The last thing I want to show you uh, is what's called a double shift. So sometimes you will be given a question where both the supply and the demand are changing in some way. So in this example, I've gone ahead and told you that the demand increases and the supply increases. And so what we see here is that when supply shifts to the right and demand shifts to the right, it is very clear that quantity is increasing, right? But what's tricky here is what's happening to the price. The way that I've drawn it, it would seem that the price is not changing uh, moving from this initial equilibrium point where supply and demand intersect to the new equilibrium point with our two new supply and demand curves. But I'm assuming that if you're drawing it in your notes, you may have drawn it in such a way that P1 might be a little higher than PE or maybe a little lower than PE. And that's why we have to say that the price change is indeterminate. This does not mean no change. It means that we are not certain as economists what is going to happen to the price of this product. Now, why is that the case? Well, it may be helpful to look at uh, what is happening individually in the market. So we know that one of the curve shifts is supply to the right. When supply shifts to the right by itself, price falls, quantity rises. When demand shifts to the right by itself, price rises, and so too does quantity. So if we look at each of these separately, in both cases, quantity is increasing, which is why we said for our answer to this question about the double shift, we know the quantity is increasing. However, notice that when supply shifts to the right and demand shifts to the right, they put opposite pressures on the price. The supply shift is resulting in a lower price. In demand, uh, the demand shift to the right is resulting in a higher price. And so that is why the price change is indeterminate because we don't know which effect is greater, this price decrease or this price increase. 
And so one trick when you're given a double shift is to draw each change separately and then combine the results to see what happens. If you get the same answer for both, then write that answer, quantity increases. But if you get different answers for one of the variables, which you will with a double shift, uh, then you would write indeterminate. So the last pro tip I will leave you is when you have a double shift, one of the two variables, price or quantity, will change and the other will be indeterminate. So that is all for this video on market disequilibrium and changes to equilibrium. Until next time, have a great day.